my world, uh, Tikal. I'm good. He's discovering lots about himself, and he's spending a lot more time in the bathroom. This will be the high point of my day. Todd, let's talk. Todd Villa, bitch. Here's a Toddzilla X dispatch. Well, it thus ends the uh, trip to Flores Island and uh, Tikal. I uh, finally got all three of the Mayan sites checked off my list, uh, Tutsunitsa, Palenque, and Tikal. And from here, um, heading south, going to hop on a bus, an actual bus, a first-class bus, so I can stretch out for five hours <laughs> until I get down to the river, uh, Rio Dulce, and then onward toward the Caribbean. We'll talk to you from down there. There's something very bizarre about sitting in a Guatemala bus station with VH1 Classic going in the background. Well, the first class buses down here don't exactly compare with Mexico's, but they're still better than Greyhound by a long shot. Before I got into Guatemala this year, I had never heard of any place called Rio Dulce. Hadn't heard of it until we'd gotten to Lake Atitlan, and Peter had told me that that was where he decided to go after he left the little group there. I heard some more about it when I got to Samuk Champe, and people continued to tell me, Todd, you need to go check out Rio Dulce all the way through Flores and Tikal. So at the last minute, I sort of decided to head down that way, see what I could find. I slept through the entire five-hour trip, didn't see much of the countryside at all, and by the time that I had gotten to Rio Dulce itself, I had to run, basically, from the bus to the boat that was going to take me down the river to a hostel that Peter told me about called the Roundhouse that I wanted to check out. Not that I really knew how long it was going to take. I knew that the roundhouse was a ways away from the city. But the ride took a whole lot longer than expected because the driver of the boat kept making pit stops, little side tours, sightseeing. And everywhere we went, it seemed, there were kids. Kids in little canoes, all by themselves, paddling around doing who knows what. In the States, it's almost like if a parent were to let their child go out on a canoe by themselves, they would be arrested by Child Protective Services within the hour. It smells like Yellowstone. The Roundhouse turned out to be one of my favorite hostels anywhere. You cannot beat the setting. And there was some excellent food. I basically spent my time lounging around talking to people, learning a little bit more about the area, getting some insights into sailing from some of the expats, and just relaxing. It was like Atitlan in the sense that I just did not want to leave. You know, Livingston started out pretty well. <laughs> so that's 
I kept hearing about a pretty famous party hostel. So as soon as I got off the boat, I found it, got checked in, made a couple of friends, and uh, began to settle in for what I thought would be at least a couple of days, maybe a week. We walked around the city a little bit, highlighted by a couple of hours spent at a cafe owned by one of the locals, playing with her kids and eating a bunch of food. We made our way back to the hostel and got prepared for what was sure to be a night of extravagance, debauchery, and tomfoolery. I was not disappointed. We spent the evening in the common area. Everything was great. Until this. That is my memory after about midnight. The only shadow of a memory I have is crawling through the window of my dormitory because I couldn't figure out where the door was, stumbling across the room, and falling into my bunk. That kind of night. Apparently. Next morning I woke up with a gargantuan hangover, of course. And I didn't feel like doing anything. I was just going to stay there read a book, sleep, and nurse the hangover until the next day. I went up to the front desk, and the obnoxiously rude Hungarian, Romanian, some Eastern European woman not so politely told me that my presence was no longer required at the party hostel of Livingston. And not only me, the friend that I had made the day before was also told that he needed to evacuate. That has never happened to me. You know, I've been kicked out of a bar or two, but never have I been kicked out, even close to being kicked out of a hostel, let alone a party hostel of that stature. Not my best moment, but I suppose on some level, I wear it as a badge of honor. Luckily, right after I left, I happened to run into one of the guys that I had stayed with at the roundhouse. We decided to share a hotel room for the night, and that was pretty much that. We walked around, found some food, had a beer or two, hoping that the hangover would go away, but no, it was an early night. From the outset, I was disappointed anyhow. Sort of a grungy, dingy town, nondescript. It had a Caribbean feel to it, but you know, it felt like a waste of time. So I made a beeline down for the dock and caught the very first boat that I could out of Livingston and back up the river all the way past the roundhouse to Rio Dulce. That was lovely, now let's dance. After making the trip all the way there and spending all this time on the river, I was finally going to see the city proper, the city of Rio Dulce, Frontera. It had to be better than Livingston, right? Well, it sure was. And then some. The Toddzilla X, Toddzilla X Dispatch. Toddzilla X.com or a Toddzilla X on Facebook. 